So we're going to look at steel or armoured, I believe. All the stuff that we've already learned in the workshop and in previous weeks one to six is going to allow us to populate the notes in front of us now. I apologise to anyone who's watching this on YouTube who would like to download the notes. This set isn't available on the Efix Apprentice Hub under uh, uh, the <coughs> Apprentice Hub in Teacher's Corner because too many of the images were borrowed from other publications and I didn't have the copyright and I didn't have enough time to redraw them. So just bear in mind that we're going to go through as much as we can before we put a pen to paper of what we've already learned. Now, as it, can you look in your appendix for the appropriate appendix for interfacing of cable? So where we're joining an old cable and a new cable together, there were some precautions when interfacing um, three phase and three phase and neutral conductors together. So three lines and neutral. Has anyone found that appendices for me? Yeah. Yeah, what you got, what you got Ed? I think it's John? Uh, six, appendix six. Okay, point, John? Point I thought, yeah, 6.3. Okay, I'm in Appendix K. Okay, so let's have a look at Appendix K for me. Under Identification of Conductors, uh, page one, 201. Again, I died a little bit inside when we had no idea where we were looking. Yeah, okay. Have we, so if we turn to 203, have we seen that page before? Yes, that one we have, yeah. Yes, okay, so so this starts linking into our learning for our steel or armoured notes, okay? We're going to look at cable tray, basket and ladder as well, but predominantly the armoured section. Now, seeing the table there, it clearly defines how we join together a coloured system of mix. So if we've got both uh, pre-2004 and post-2004 cable colours. In single phase, we know there's no issue, is there? If we go into a socket outlet and it's already got red and black in it, is it okay to put brown and blue in there? Yeah. Yep. It is. Do we have to identify within the back of the socket outlet anything to suggest that we're between two colours? No, not in the socket. But No, but we do have to somewhere identify it. Where do we have to identify yep. it somewhere? On the Go consumer on, unit. Brilliant. And we looked at the sticker, didn't we? And that's in the front of, obviously, the on-site guide, and we won't need to flick to that now. So we had to put that on the consumer unit. Bit different now, we're going to a perhaps commercial industrial world where all of a sudden now we've got a consumer unit when we take it off or distribution board, we should be saying that's a distribution board, take the panel off and it's got a populated of three phase and neutral colors. There's gonna be some real issues if we get it wrong. We looked at that in a previous set of notes, so it's important that we revisit it now. Old cable colors, if they were all four conductors, give me them, please, Dan, give me one of the old cable colors. Uh, black. Black. Any others? And uh, black and red. Okay. Uh, Ed? Uh, blue and yellow. Yeah. And anyone missing another colour? Green. Okay. Anyone else? Old cable colours were the following. We've got these colours here. So we're looking at red, yellow, blue, L1, L2, L3, and black was our neutral. And we had a moment, didn't we, in one of our weeks where we said what's happening was that the blue conductor now has turned into in the new system. Blue's turned into what? Neutral line. Uh, uh, yeah. no, neutral edge, yeah. And the black's turned into? CPC. L L yeah, so it's turned into a line conductor. So as we look in page 203, you can see how important it is. So if we look at the old cable colours, red, yellow, blue, marked L1, L2, L3. Our new colours, brown, black, grey, marked L1, L2, L3. Old system, black is marked with a neutral, with an N, and our blue is marked with an N as neutral. And we said it started getting a bit confusing, didn't it? So you've got to be really, really careful. OK, so that was our old cable colour systems. If we had a two core steel were armoured in the old system, which colours would be present? A, what, a two core system in the old colors what do you reckon would be present red and black well done yeah so we would have an armored cable that would be red and black yeah. okay so that makes sense so when you're going out and doing jobs for your domestic installer course you might see an armored which red and black so that's a single phase what if it was three core red, red three. yellow and blue it would so we take out the black now we've got red yellow and blue okay under that system and then obviously we've got the four core there. So you've just got to be aware of how we're going to be doing it. And if you imagine we had red, yellow, blue, and we had it as a single phase circuit, red would be the line, 
blue would be neutral and identified with black and the yellow one would be identified with green and yellow as our CPC. So you've got to keep your wits about you as you move forward. OK, if it was a three phase load would be fine. Red, yellow, blue, three lines. And if there was no neutral, what type of load would it be connected to? Three phase. Balanced. Yeah, three phase balance load. So between, yeah, three phase balance loads would require some neutral. If in old system it needed a neutral, maybe it was a, a distribution board you were feeding or a piece of machinery and we introduced the neutral. <clears throat> Obviously, there we go. So we've got three phase and neutral, maybe an unbalanced load or supplying another distribution board. One conductor we haven't described yet, which would be uh, present but not talked about so far, which conductor are we now missing? CPC. CPC. Yeah, so our CPC is going to be provided by this here, the outside of the cable, which is which material? Steel. It is steel, but it's covered in something as well. Thermoplastic. Nice. We'll get to that. No, I just mean the actual, so I apologise, John, that was me, not you. Oh, the no, steel no. itself has got something on it. Galvanised. It is, but we can't put galvanised on something. John, save yourself. What can we put on it to galvanise it? Steel galvanised. Zinc galvanised. Good. So we add zinc onto this. Uh, Dan, why have we got zinc on the actual steel itself? For uh, it's uh, not to rust. Yeah, good. So to prevent it from corroding. And we can use this as a CPC. The rule of thumb is between 16 and 25 mil, it starts becoming not a large enough conductor to be the CPC. However... When you're walking around and you're seeing cable tray with armors on, often you see a green and yellow conductor by the side of it. And you might think, oh, that's the bonding conductor for the water or gas or structure of the building. It isn't. More often than not, it is a separate green and yellow conductor running alongside an armored to be its circuit protective conductor. So you'd use both the steel earthed, but also a separate green and yellow one in order to get your earth fault loop impedance low enough in order to get disconnection. Now you did your earth fault loop impedance stuff with Matthew out of my set of notes. There is a video on the channel as well about the earth fault loop path. And again, if you're unsure, go back and just watch that. It's an animated video talking about that path. So that's why you see a separate green and yellow conductor running alongside. That was the old colors. I've only got a three core because I've only got what's in my garage at the minute. So I've got a three core steel where I'm in here under new colors. And we've got brown, black, gray. And we know clearly that L1, brown, L2, black, L3, grey, brown, black, grey, agreed? Yeah. If, yeah. I had, if I had a four-core armoured, um, Gramos, if I had a four-core, not a three-core, which colour cable do you think they would add to the brown, the black and the grey? Which one would be added? Blue. Yeah, would be the blue conductor, because this would be three lines and the separate, obviously, then we've got a neutral as well. So this is as if we've got three lines. However... If it isn't being used as a single, sorry, a three-phase circuit using L1, L2, and L3 to a balance load ed, and I use it as a single-phase circuit, which colour would I use for line? Brown. I'd use brown as line, I agree. Which one would I use as neutral? Grey. You would, because we're denutralising black. That would have blue sleeving on it and would yep. be neutral. And what would I use the black one for? CPC. So that would be covered in green and yellow and be our CPC. And we can now see quite quickly in our own mind between the old colours, the new colours, making them single or three phase, that it's very important that we identify them correctly. And that's where Appendix K is so super important. And don't think as a domestic installer, you're not going to come across steel armour cables. You're going to come across them loads, whether it be a cable run out to feed a remote garage, a shed, uh, an outhouse or annex. Yeah. So the cable will go from the house outside where else would we be looking to see steel or armored cables in domestic dwellings electric car charging points great answer anywhere else ponds to the yeah boiler. ponds and sorry dan boiler to the boiler no maybe not maybe not to the boiler where else so we've got car charging garages about, garages yeah Garden lighting would be the key one for me. And if you think you're trying Shed. to up sheds, yeah, sheds as well. If you're trying to upset, upsell your installation, so rewiring a property, but you're going to look to leave the infrastructure ready for garden in the future, spa tubs or whatever there is, but you'd like to be leaving an armoured cable on a box somewhere, either in the garden or on the exterior of the building, so you can actually start controlling outside lighting, etc. It might only be that you add that one circuit in, 
to go for armoured cables going out. So it might be that the internal cables in twin and CPC, but obviously gives them the ability then to go out. What sort of enclosure would I need to install if I was on the outside of the building ready for or using it as something for garden lighting, etc.? What sort of enclosure? IP rated. Good lad, IP rated. So I've got a box here uh, from Whisker. I come in all kinds of sizes, etc., and colours. I've only got a black one. Again, it's what I've got in my garage at the moment as we're playing Can Gary Find the Kit? And this is IP66. Okay, this is IP66. It can be 67, it can be 68. You can actually fill these full of a resin as long as you use the appropriate glands. Appropriate glands. So if this box is screwed to the outside of the building and you're connecting maybe a PVC cable into the back, a set of Vargo connectors in there or screwed connections, and then you're going to come out to garden lighting. What type of gland will I need to make sure is on the actual box itself? 